everybody. It's Connie Stewart with simplysimplestamping.com. I'm so glad you guys could join me today. It's time for another Tuesday tip video. So we are going to be talking about a technique today. How about some new and fresh ideas using the masking technique? We're going to bring in some blending brushes as well. But what I'm really excited about today is I've got three different ways that you can do masking you're gonna pick the one that works best for you. I'm really excited to share these cards with you. So we're gonna head over to the stamping table and get to creating. So this is what I mean by the masking technique. Can you see the sharp lines that I've been able to create? I'm gonna teach you how to do this. And as I said at the beginning, I've got three different ways uh, to teach it. I just want you to find the method that works best for you. I'll tell you what, I think we're gonna start with my Celebrate You card. Friends, before I get started, I wanna let you know there's no need to write down any measurements because I've got a free download that goes along with today's video. You're going to have all the supplies, the measurements. Look at my lousy printer who's not working. Shame, shame. Uh, you're also gonna have a QR code. You can come back if you need to watch the video again. And of course, there is a supply list where you can order and I would love to be your Stampin' Up! demonstrator. You can find that at simplysimplestamping.com or look down in the YouTube description. So let's go over the supplies that you need. I have got a card base in Blackberry Bliss. This is four and a quarter by 11 inches, scored at five and a half. I have another piece of Blackberry Bliss. This is for layering. This is a four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm also gonna bring in a little Lost Lagoon. Looks so pretty with that Blackberry Bliss. And that is two and a half inches by four and a quarter. And the last thing you're going to need are a couple pieces of basic white, four inches by five and a quarter. That's what we're gonna be doing for the uh, outside of our card and our inside of the card. And we'll be using some of these um, techniques, these uh, blending techniques and the masking technique on this one here. Now let's talk about how to do the masking. Stampin' Up! has this amazing masking paper. I am gonna teach you how to use that, but I also want you to have ways that you can do it if you don't have any kind of masking paper. Guys, this is a piece of copy paper. I've cut it six by six to make it easy to work with. Uh, you know what, this is a great way to use up some of that junk mail you have as well. So this can just be anything at all. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about this piece first because it is going to need a little bit of drying time if you want to use this technique. So uh, my first method is done with the multi-purpose glue, also known as green glue to many of you. And what we're going to do here is on one side, just one side of our paper, I'm going to put just a very thin line of my multi-purpose glue. And let me show you, I'm going to do something unheard of. Look at this. We're just going to smear it. I want it to be super just a very, very thin um, kind of just, oh, how do I say it? Just, I just want this lightly tacky. We want that to dry completely, all right? Because we don't want to stick to um, our cardstock. We just want it to be tacky. So that's why we want to kind of smear all that down. I have glue on my fingers. I'm going to go wash that off really quick. A little cold water removes that easy. All right, now I'm going to take my stamp and seal and I'm going to run this all down this side of the other side. So there's my glue and there's my stamp and seal. Whichever method uh, works best for you, you're going to be able to do this. I'm going to recommend you try them both and see which one you like best. Now, I talked about making this tacky. We want it to be tech, not that kind of tacky. We want it to be less sticky. So I'm going to show you, see, it's pretty sticky right now. And here is my method. Ready? Put my little sweater here to the test. And I'm just going to de-stickify that by rubbing it. You can also rub it on your jeans. That's even better. Yep, I think that's gonna work great. By this time, now my glue is dry, and as I'm touching it, I can tell it's perfect. It's not gonna stick to my paper, it's just enough. That is what I'm gonna use for my masking. Now, again, I'll show you how to use the technique using the masking paper here in a minute, but I'll tell you what, we're gonna stick with this one for our first card. You are going to need some grid paper underneath you for this one. So I'll tell you what, we're gonna start with our, uh, our stamp and seal side. And I'm gonna use this grid paper to my advantage. So I'm gonna line it up here. And you wanna decide how far over do you want your, um, your masking to go. So I tell you what, I think I'm gonna go over 
three quarters of an inch. So that's going to be three of these little squares. So I'm going to put that one there. Are you ready? I'm going to do something crazy because I need both sides of this. I'm just going to tear this in half. <laughs> you know, you, you work with what you've got, right? Now let's take this side and we'll move it over three quarters of an inch. The reason I wanted this to be six inches long is because it now gives me some little tabs here and here that's gonna hold my paper in place, all right? So I don't have to worry about that moving around. Let's talk colors. I'm gonna use Lost Lagoon and Granny Apple Green as my backgrounds. Tell you what, I think we're gonna start with the Granny Apple Green. And friends, we are going to use blending brushes today. I'm gonna to start this card I'm gonna create and I'm gonna use the large uh, blending brushes. We also have small ones. I'll show you those on the next card. So you can see this one I've already used for my Granny Apple Green. I am just gonna just lightly tap that on there and I'm gonna get just a little bit of this off, all right? Remember, this is scrap. We're not even, we don't even care. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna start at the bottom and I'm just gonna swirl this ink on. You know, so I'm just kinda going back and forth, back and forth. Here's the thing about blending brushes. I can always add more ink, but I can't take it away once it's on there. So I wanna go about halfway up this cardstock with my Granny Apple Green. Now I want the bottom to be just a little bit darker. Let me show you here on my card. Do you see how I kinda go dark to light? So let's add just a little bit more. To make it darker, what do you do? You add a little bit more ink and maybe press just a little bit harder, okay? And that's gonna give us, uh, it's just a beautiful look, right? So I've got my Granny Apple Green done. I'm gonna rotate this around and now I'm gonna bring in my Lost Lagoon. And guess what we're gonna do? Exactly what we just did. So I'm gonna ink up my blending brush. Let's get some of that off. Cause see how it's not real pretty? It kind of swirls a little funny. And same thing now from the bottom up, we're gonna do a little darker at the bottom. So that's why we wanna start at the bottom. And we're gonna lightly swirl that color right up there. Now, interesting enough, it got a little dark here. I'm all right with that. So I can add that, you know what? Let's blend these two together. We'll bring in that granny apple green. I didn't even add more ink to it. I just wanna blend these together. Our blending is done. Now let me show you the magic of this masking, ready? You're gonna lightly remove this. It's such a wow, you guys, such a wow. Ta-da, do you see that nice sharp line? This one, let's see, this was my glue, my multi-purpose glue. This one that I had here, that was the uh, stamp and seal. So you see they both worked great. And look at this fantastic piece of cardstock. Let's do something a little bit special to this. I'm going to bring in some dies. Friends, this is 1000% optional. I just like the look of the deckled rectangle dies. I'm going to use the second from the largest. All right, second from the largest. And what I want to do is I'm gonna die cut that deckled rectangle. Just make sure you kind of center it up. The reason I like to do my blending and all first is it gives me the option to kind of move this around. Now, if you weren't using these uh, deckled rectangles, you could simply trim it down. We'll start with uh, base plate one, our thin die adapter two, and then one cutting plate three. Now I can lay this right here. Again, like I said, I wanna line it up from side to side because I want that um, to be centered in there. We're gonna to top it with another cutting plate three. Run this through. And what we now get is look at that, gorgeous little deckled edges. So that's why I said I really love to use these. You know, since we have our die cutting machine out, let me tell you something else we're gonna do. I'm now going to take the largest die, all right? The largest one, and we're gonna take that four and a half, or four and a quarter by five and a half, and let's also do a die cut with the largest deckle. This is gonna give us a really great layer. And so you can see we have just very minimal scrap. We love that. And you know what, guys? I think I'm gonna go ahead and put the base of my card together. Then we're gonna get into our stamping. So I had you cut a piece of two and a half by four and a quarter Lost Lagoon. I'm going to put that right here in the center of my card base, okay? This is the card 
base. I'm now going to take my deckled piece of Blackberry Bliss. Let's bring in some Stampin' Dimensionals. You know, sometimes you might notice there's really no rhyme or reason sometimes to when I put the card together or when I do the stamping. Uh, friends, on this one, you do you. If this works best for you, go ahead and add this. Um, or if you like to do all your stamping and all your adhering at one time, feel free. I'm going to remove these backings and then, guys, I'm simply going to center that up in my card. It's just going to add a great piece of dimension to the card. Now let's get into some stamping. So we have two pieces we're going to stamp on. Let's go ahead and stamp on our front focal image first. So let me share with you my stamp set for today. Dainty delight, dainty, beautiful. It is a delight. We're gonna use this great big stamp here. And I'm gonna be using a basic gray ink pad for this. I wanted a little bit softer than uh, the black ink. So we're gonna go a little basic gray. I will ink up my stamp and I want this to go off on my side here just a little bit all right and I'm also stamping off the bottom so let's go about right here I'll give that just a gentle press remember a thin delicate lined stamp you want to use a little bit lighter pressure and when I lift I have this beautiful let's go ahead and get our sentiment which is celebrate you and I will stamp that again it's going to go off just slightly but that's what makes it look so gorgeous. All right, there's that uh, part of my card, but mm, it needs a little something, right? So let's bring in a couple Stampin' Blends. This could also be the Stampin' Write Markers. I'm using my Dark Highland Heather and my Light Granny Apple Green. And what I'm gonna do here is just simply go over my flowers just so they kind of pop right off of that color. Isn't that so pretty? All right. I'll tell you what, if you guys will give me just a couple seconds here, I will fast forward through some coloring. And uh, actually, before I do, let me tell you, I'm going to go ahead and color in all of my flowers in the um, light, or I'm sorry, that was the dark Highland Heather, and then my light Granny Apple Green. I'll come in, and I'm just going to come in and color in all of my leaves. Very simple. Let me get through that for you. What do you think? So pretty, right? Okay, we're gonna actually go ahead and add this to the front of our card. Uh, friends, this can just be done here with some Stampin' Steel or your multi-purpose glue. Remember, you were using one or the other. So we'll add that to the front. And now I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do on the inside of our card. And so that I can keep my video moving along quickly, I'm actually just going to show you. So I used uh, one of the smaller stamps from the Dainty Delight, this one here. I stamped, I colored, and then I just came in with my blending brushes and I didn't even do any more re-inking. And I just simply added a little bit of the Lost Lagoon, a little bit of the Granny Apple Green. I stamped the best is yet to come. And I'm gonna give that just a little bit of swirl. Uh, doesn't that look gorgeous, right? So, so simple. And if you wanted to, you could also do a little deckled uh, on the inside as well. I've got plenty of room to write my message. And you can see here, I added a Lost Lagoon bow. So Bows add so much to a card. This is what kind of steps it up from just a simple card to a wow. I'm gonna take my bow and I'm gonna press it right here onto a mini glue dot. That's what will allow me to pick that up. And I can just add that right here to the corner of my card. Gives me just a little bit more of the Lost Lagoon. And here's the thing, I wanna show you the difference between the two cards because yeah, I went a little extra heavy on this one, a little bit lighter here. Guys, both cards are still beautiful. You can't mess it up. Um, but like I said, you can always add more color but you can't take it away. So that is my first card. I've got another card to share with you. Don't forget, I do have that free download for you that goes along with my cards today. You can find that at simplysimplestamping.com or you can just look down in the YouTube description. There is a direct link to my post. You'll see a great big blue button. Grab your free download here. I'd love for you to have that. So when you need a new card idea or need a little refresher on the masking technique, you'll have that right there at your fingertips. All right, now that we have that done, I'm ready to share with you another card featuring 
the masking and blending brush technique. And this one is fun. So how many of you love Neapolitan ice cream? It's one of my favorites. I'm gonna teach you how to do this very simple technique and then we're gonna create a really great card. So for this one, as I said, we're going to use the Stampin' Up! masking paper. There are 12 sheets in the package and we're actually going to use one sheet, but guess what? You get to keep reusing this over and over and over again because I've got tips to make that easy for you. Now with this paper, um, it is a five by seven. So I find it best if you'll cut it in half at the five and a half inch mark. Now you can use, uh, you can see there is a slice right there in the middle. I'm actually gonna recommend with this that you use your paper trimmer. You might be wondering why. Well, here's why. Because this way we can use both sides of this paper. When I say both sides, when this is cut in half, I wanna be able to use this side or this side, this side or this side. Yep, another great trick. So let's cut this in half at two and a half inches. And now you can see if I line it up here, I've got a straight edge. If I line it up here, I have a straight edge. Before we get too deep into this, let me share my supplies for my little ice cream card. I'm gonna be using the basic quite thick as the card base. Again, four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. I've got some basic white now. This isn't thick, just regular basic white. This is a one and a half by six inches, but it can be some scrap. We're gonna be uh, stamping our ice cream there. This is where I'm going to show you the technique and this is a three and a half by three and three quarters and then I've got a piece of pecan pie that is three and three quarters by four so you can see how that's going to layer but again more tips and tricks we're going to do a little die cutting from this so we don't want to adhere anything down yet uh, I'll tell you what we're going to start with our masking because there are things you need to know about masking paper. It's great paper, but it can actually be almost too sticky. So here's what I'm going to do. There, it's got a little backing paper on it, and I don't want that to get too far away from me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel this back about to there, okay? Uh, there's no right or wrong there. What if I, look, I didn't even fold it straight. That's fine. But you can see it's tacky, but I want to make sure it's not going to stick to my paper. So uh, what, what I'm going to do here, let me go ahead and make sure I'm lining up my cardstock correctly. So I'm gonna put the three and three quarter inch right here. So can you see how I'm using my grid? That's gonna come in super handy because what we have are 15 squares. Boy, is that gonna make it easy. So I'm gonna start here. I know it's sideways, but I'm gonna start here at the top and I wanna gently lay my grid or my uh, masking paper right here at five. Guys, I want you to just barely touch that down. But you see how it's holding my card stock in place, right? Everything down, I'm gonna rotate this around and I'm gonna start up at the top, I'm gonna to start with crumb cake ink. And this time I'm going to use the small blending brushes. You can use either one, but some uh, sometimes you might prefer having something just a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna ink that up in crumb cake. Now let me tell you, that does not look like vanilla. So this one, we want it to go on very, very, very light because we're just gonna make this kind of look like a vanilla ice cream. And I gotta tell you, I'm kind of swirling um, back and forth and maybe kind of in a little bit of a circular motion. I think that's good right there. Now, when you go to lift this, I want you to take it off very slowly. It's doing great. And ta-da, there's my nice straight line. Now watch what, I'm, watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna flip this around. I'm gonna go right over that line. Very simple, remember we just went five over. Tap, 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 tap. Just lightly tap that down. Oh. You guys know the drill. We're just going to peel back this backing. But see, here's the thing. I can keep reusing this over and over. So it makes it really, really nice and easy to work with. In fact, as I look at it, I could have easily cut it in thirds, but we're good. We're just gonna give this a fold back, make it just a little less tacky. And now we're gonna go five squares down. That's what's going to make sure all of this is nice and even. All right, our next color is pecan pie. Now I can bring in another blending brush, that's fine, or you can go ahead and reuse this one. By the way, these can be rinsed under cool water, 
the ink will come right out. Um, even if it's stained, it's still good to go. You don't have to worry about it. So here's my pecan pie. Again, I want to get some of that off of there. Now let's make some chocolate ice cream. Again, when it's chocolate, you're going to want to go a little bit darker. In fact, as I look at that, I think I want it a little bit darker than that. So again, remember, you can add more, but you can't take it away. All right, and I've got that color done. And remember, we're just going to lift very gently, just lightly peel that away. And I've got another straight line. And you know what? I'm not even going to move this again. I'm just going to lay my masking paper right back. Let's do a little sweet sorbet. The sweet sorbet is really dark and we want it to look like strawberry. So, oh, you know what? Just a tiny bit more and I think I've got it. All right, shall we see what our final result is? There's that one. We have vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. Isn't that so pretty? Okay, so I said that you can reuse these. Watch this, we're just gonna put that paper right back down. I'm going to take these pieces, whoops, got a little string there, and I'm gonna tuck them right back in the package. And I get to use these over and over and over again. And if they eventually lose or sticky, well, guess what? It's probably about time to let them go. But that's how I keep those so I can keep on keeping on. Right. So uh, the stamp set and dies we're gonna use today are share a milkshake. So much fun. Do you see this? Do you see this awesome little ice cream cone? I'm gonna put that right in the middle of my pecan pie and I'm gonna die cut that. You saw me die cut earlier with the decals. I'm gonna do it again. One of my favorite tips that I share with you guys is how to conserve your cardstock. This is going to be going on top of my card, but why waste it? Let's get that fabulous little ice cream cone and let's use it. So you can see it can either wrap around on the front or just a regular cone here on the back, whichever way. And just for fun, just for fun, let's go ahead and bring in our pecan pie. I'm gonna make this just a little bit deeper because it's going to give that ice cream cone a different look than the background. And, oh, do you see it? It's also making the lines in that pop. Now this side area, not even using it. I'm gonna just let the front of this ice cream cone be the star. So I'm not even gonna worry about that, but it just kind of gives it a little extra pop. We're going to do a little more stamping and we're going to get creative with our ice cream. So I'm going to bring in these three colors again. Uh, let's see, I'm actually going to start with my crumb cake because that's my lightest color. Now, when I stamp the ice cream, I'm going to show you something. If I stamp there, again, it does not look like vanilla. But if I don't re-ink it and I stamp, that does look like vanilla. Right, Okay. now I'll come in with the pecan pie. And guess what, we're gonna do the same thing. That's just a little bit dark for me. So, and I'm actually gonna flip this over. Only doing it to kind of save some space. See how that's looking just a little bit lighter? It's a great way to stretch the colors of your ink pads. Now we'll do our sweet sorbet. And I don't think I mentioned it. You're going to want to clean your stamp in between. So let's stamp off our sweet sorbet and then on our cardstock. So that gives us a softer look. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cherry. Now I'm going to do something a little fun here. I'm going to ink it up in sweet sorbet. And then I'm going to come along with my black marker. And I'm just going to go right over that stem just to make my stem black instead of red. I'm going to stamp that right there. You notice I didn't stamp off and that's what's going to make these two colors look so different. All right, so now that we have that done, let's bring in our dye for the ice cream. So I will uh, die cut all three of those and then of course we'll die cut the cherry. And then it's going to be time to build our card. All right, let's build some ice cream. I'm gonna put some adhesive on my vanilla and let's add some chocolate ice cream. You notice it doesn't take a lot of adhesive and then we're gonna actually add these to our card with Stampin' Dimensionals. So there is my stack of ice cream. Oh, my little cherry, we're gonna make it easy. We had those glue dots out earlier. We'll press that cherry on with a glue dot. Do you guys notice, hopefully you can see it there, there's a little slit here because this can also be the top of a, a, 
a shake or um, a smoothie, something like that. We're just going to cover that up right there with our cherry. All right, we're going to start building. So I want to make sure I know how my uh, Neapolitan's going to go here onto my pecan pie. Remember, we die cut from that. And we love to conserve our cardstock, so we're going to cover that up. No one will see that. We're going to add this here to the front of our card. I've adhered my ice cream cone together on the back. We'll put some adhesive right there. I told you our ice cream we're actually going to add with Stampin' Dimensionals. You know, dimensionals are just one of those things. Uh, it's a very inexpensive way to take an ordinary card and make it a great big wow. So let's add, oh, about four dimensionals to this, and we're gonna top off that ice cream. We'll add those to our cone, another quick stamp, and I'm gonna bring in my Memento Black for this. And I am simply going to say, you're the cherry on top. And what I did to kind of dress it up just a little bit is I took some of our real red ribbon and just tied it around in the middle to just make for a great card. Friends, I left the inside of this one uh, blank, but you are welcome to add more of the stamps from the Share a Milkshake um, or another sentiment, maybe life is sweeter with you would be great with this one. Get creative with the card. Let me bring in my first card. Guys, I'm telling you, this blending brush technique is gorgeous, it's fun, it's easy. It's going to allow you to create some amazing backgrounds with very little effort. And remember, you've just learned three different ways that you can mask. Masking paper, uh, multi-purpose glue, or the Stampin' Seal. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you loved today's video. If you did, would you give me a thumbs up on YouTube? I always appreciate that. And if you haven't subscribed, why not click the subscribe button? So YouTube can let you know whenever I'm back with a new video. While you're at it, share with some crafty friends. We love to have everyone join us here on the channel. Make it a great day, everybody. Go stamp something, send it to a friend, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.